Hey folks, so bought a bunch more stuff at auction, surprise, surprise, and uh, had to travel about an hour out of my way to pick the stuff up, but uh, did that. Um, by the way, if you haven't seen our videos before, or my videos before, the basis of what I do is behind the scenes of the antiques business, and I show various uh, the stuff I've bought, how much I've paid for it, where it was obtained, how I've gotten it, etc. And the values of some of the stuff. Um, as well as uh, different other aspects of the business. So, anyway, uh, this one will go through the stuff that I picked up. And I bought 18 lots of stuff. And cost me a total of $254.29. And that's Canadian funds. Because I'm in Manitoba, Canada. But anyway, I'll show you what I got here. Uh, looks like some doorknobs, it says on the box. But uh, they're just modern porcelain doorknobs, or uh, drawer knobs. So we'll uh, just probably donate those to the thrift shop. Because they're modern. Don't need those. Uh, from one of the lots, kind of an odd oil can. It's not what I was bidding on, of course, probably. It was something else in the lot. These in particular, but I see these are bent, unfortunately. Um, this one may be even cut down. I'm not sure. It almost looks cut down, but uh, anyway, oil bottle top that's been put on a just some random jar. That's not an oil jar by any stretch of the imagination. So anyway, we've got an oil spout. Then a second oil spout, an eco spout. Got a bend in it though. I hope those didn't cost me much. I don't think they did. Uh, the most I paid for any particular lot was $35. And most of the stuff beyond that was anywhere from a dollar to $15. So there was a couple lots that were $35, but the rest were a dollar to $15. A dollar, five dollars, fifteen dollars type thing. And we've got a... I had a request for this, for one of these. This is an apple peeler, a mechanical apple peeler. Um, had a guy request one just the other day, too. I should have taken his number, but he'll be back, so hopefully... I'll tag that and that cost me oh let's see um oh the oil bottle and spouts cost me 10 bucks my oh my um that was too much but anyway the uh the apple peeler cost me let's see it doesn't say oh here we go Vintage Hudson Pearer, I guess that's supposed to be Peeler. It's cost me 15 bucks. So that's that'll be good for 65 or more. I'll have to check on the make and model of it. I'm sure it'll be a little little bit uh, more than 65. We'll see. Uh, let's see. We've got a couple of Ford hubcaps over here. So nice, nice ones here, actually. And factory Ford, so that's pretty cool. So that's neat. It didn't cost me a lot again. Uh, this looks like a tire off of either a toy tractor or an ashtray. Don't know which. Guess we'll find out. But anyway, that was just part of a lot that uh, the Ford pieces were in. Got a belt buckle from the Silver Star Casino, I guess. Uh, I'm not sure if that's going to have any value. Uh, some Viewmaster reels. Viewmaster. These were just in a lot. These are not stuff I went after. But uh, there was one or two things in the lot I may have been wanting. Four of these vice press. I assume that's for a tie. Necktie. So let's see. And then we got some toy wheels off a cast tractor. And we got a whole stack of Esso Bill Bill Argue um, 
a bunch of pads so that's kind of neat i think i paid ten dollars for this whole lot so i got a whole got these mainly is what i was after and then i got a whole bunch of bits of other stuff um austin auto museum or austin agricultural museum pennant another pennant from pleasant valley canada wherever that pleasant valley is i assume manitoba somewhere um empty box not sure what that's about but it was in there uh i got a couple other or a another notepad address and memo pad that will just head back into auction more than likely i can't see any extra value in that maybe for um maybe for movies or something like that but not a lot of value in the store uh reproduction cast iron coffee grinder toy nothing special that'll go into auction again somewhere else uh this is what i was after in this particular lot uh that included that little cast iron piece uh this was a husky oil company or husky refining company paperweight and these seem to go anywhere from fifty dollars to four hundred dollars I, I don't know why it's such a spread but i suspect this will be good for 75 or so so anyway but uh yeah i think it was about 10 or 15 dollars that lot which also included a couple other pieces um a spelter tray from Hartford, Connecticut or somewhere. No, oh, Michigan. Michigan Copper Country. And a little counter that somebody paid 15 for. This was an estate of a longtime collector who passed away recently. Um, and uh, there's a, a little pencil sharpener. Um part of a stove little toy stove piece but reproduction piece but anyway so there'll be some stuff go back in auction uh long time collector anyway that um had uh tons of stuff they've they've held multiple auctions i think a dozen auctions for his stuff so far i think this was the last one uh maybe more than a dozen auctions actually come to think of it anyway we'll go through some more of the stuff so next we got a whole bunch of lamp parts uh, including a full fixture here nice cast iron ceiling fixture art deco um, there's all kinds of parts and pieces that if i were on ebay i could actually sell for some decent money um, some of these sockets are actually pretty good money if you check online and uh, yeah i've got all kinds of bits and pieces that i'll make money on they cost me all of $15. Um, I think this is for a banquet lamp, a kerosene lamp, or it's a candlestick, one or the other. Um, but anyway, lots of parts and pieces, 15 bucks, bargain, definitely a bargain. And we'll move them out of the way and get to some other stuff. Let's see, okay, here we go. And a bunch of china wares that i picked up uh including a demi tasse from the hotel vancouver that's canadian national railways so made by royal dalton so that'll mm, i think it'll probably be 35 40 dollars so i think that lot maybe cost me five or two dollars something like that and it also got me this stuff so harry if you're out there i got I got cups and saucers, but I'm not keeping them. They're going in auction. Uh, these are just Shafford. Anyway, Japanese. Nothing special. Still not cracked or anything. And, of course, I got Jake underfoot. He's uh, inspecting everything, of course. Yep, my picker dog, Jake. Making an appearance. I've uh, got a little enamel pitcher that'll be good for ah, 10, 12, 15 bucks maybe. Um, let's see, what's this? And we've got some ironstone china wedgewood. I guess that's a lid for something or maybe a base. Not sure. 
Not sure what that's from. Having a clue. Anybody out there know what that's from? Let me know in the comments. And another piece that'll go right back into an auction. Just a nor piece of Norataki, but I don't know if there's a lid for it or not. Got a little Puerto Rico Olympiad souvenir dish. This is just bits and pieces that came with that uh, mug. A little shell. What do we got here? There could always be a surprise or two. Who knows? Uh, okay. Now, I think these are actually something. No? Um, nice condition. Oh, it's cracked or something. Yeah, it might be cracked. I'll have to look at it closer later, but that might actually have some value these days. Um, got another mug here. St. Joseph's of Manitoba. Okay, nothing special. Napkin ring made from a shell. What do we got? Um, oh, there. Reach over here. Pipestone Hotel Motel. I know somebody that'll want that. Put that by the cup there. Um, let's see. Waterton Lakes, Alberta, Canada. That's one I can probably sell. Possibly sell. And let's see. We've got a piece of pressed glass by the looks of it. A sugar bowl, I would think. Um, not sure. Probably put it into inventory for a little while. If it doesn't sell, it'll go to auction. And let's see. Um, Salisbury Bone China. Another, oh, that one's broken. See, it's busted, busticated. And another cup, British Columbia, Kent, China. Not a big deal. Hmm, not too exciting so far. A couple things there. Uh, a mid-century modern piece of glass. A little ashtray. Might be able to move that, who knows. Lucite cased clock. Saber, so might have looked to sell it. Got a couple more, got a sh another shell and a napkin ring shell there. Oh, let's see. Oh, picture frame, kind of a cool picture frame of a ship's wheel. It's kind of bent though, or is it bent? Yeah, it looks bent. There we go, straighten it out a bit. Yeah, it straightens out. All right, it's kind of neat. I wonder if it'll clean up. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. And coin bank. Okay, that's exactly what it is. The conscience slot. Not sure what that's about. December 24th. Don't know. It's a bank anyway. Not sure whether that's worth anything or not really. Um pair of salt and pepper shakers these are all over the place i see tons of these co-op salt and pepper shakers that are in shape of uh propane tanks i see tons of them um got a cheat or butter dish top pretty rough shape though um ooh, i got a clock by the looks of it travel alarm clock yep west clocks Let's go back into auction. Dialite. Uh, ballet. Hmm. I don't know. I'll check it online. Who knows? May have some value. Uh, Dunray Man. A.G. Paradis. Farmer's Pocket Ledger. John Deere, I assume. A nice early one. You can see from the logo. This is one, this one is from, how old is this one? This one's got some age, but I don't know what age it is. Hmm. 1930s, perhaps? 1920s? 20s, probably. 
that's going to have some value there hopefully about 20 30 dollars maybe a bit more we'll see and we've got some other paper stuff home course in animal breeding that one's too rough for much of anything another home course in animal breeding and winnipeg paint and glass catalog or price list oh catalog price list yeah so a few saleable bits in this buyer's guide consumer reports it's garbage or thrift shop maybe i suppose and what's this here interesting no maybe not uh mid-century modern dish of sorts may have a little bit of value i have to check the pattern some of this mid-century modern stuff has gone up in value substantially compared to what it used to be uh, i've got a hot plate that's nothing special just kind of rough some more home course and animal breeding books and let's see Ackland's catalog industrial equipment supplies that's maybe sell that Packard Clipper supplement car manual as well as two other ones 57s these are all supplements so yeah anyway got a few good saleable bits so I also bought two lots of letters some brass ones and some brass and uh, aluminum ones was going to spell out the word subscribe but unfortunately didn't have the letters so anyway, just as a reminder, subscribe to our videos, or to our channel rather, and uh, you'll keep track of what's been happening and uh, all the new buys, etc., etc., etc. Anyway, and off we go. I also got these two license plate toppers from AAA, one from Harrisburg, one from Hartford, so both U.S., but... Uh, Ours are CAA rather than AAA. Anyway, so should be able to move those through uh, some of the Facebook groups, I would think. So next we have a piece that's really unassuming. Uh, it looks like a card table, kind of a fancy edged card table. Uh, fairly plain actually when it comes down to it, but it has a cord sticking out of it, which is an odd thing and has slots cut out of each side and two slots out of this side you can see here and here and it does fold up like a card table but this one has a special use if you're into gambling or card games this is something that may impress you it is actually an electric card dealing table it's called a Hammond electric table and uh, it will automatically deal the cards to each of four players so really cool really different um, definitely a sleeper in the sale because it cost me all of $15 so this particular piece goes in this condition for around 250 to 300 US so yeah, not too shabby for $15. So yeah, pretty good piece. And uh, then for five bucks, I got this tray of stuff here. Just a little kerosene stove by McClary, a Triumph number two, Coleman iron, another iron. I don't have any luck with these kind of irons. This one will just probably hit scrap. And a uh trivet now i've heard two different sources for these particular trivets these t-shaped trivets one that it's from t eaton company which i think is probably legitimate and the other is that they were given away as promo items for diamond t trucks now which one i don't know <laughs> i don't know which one is actually the legit uh, source but anyway it's a tea trivet they do pop up somewhat often around here but uh, kind of a neat little piece and then also got 
a whole tray of doorknobs. Tons and tons of doorknobs, including two Eastlake ones. I don't think these cost me more than $15 for the tray, so I'll do just fine on those. There's, I don't know, probably a hundred and a half worth of doorknobs there, maybe more. So once I get pricing them out, uh, the Eastlake ones are probably worth mm, 15 to 25 a piece. I think probably 25 is a bit closer, so 25 is $50 with the doorknobs right there, including the uh, backlights. So yeah, and then we've got some other stuff here, um, that kind of a Chinese little lacquer box, or Japanese lacquer box. Um, what do we got here? A card game, I guess this is, oh, it's Monopoly parts and such. Uh, it was just one lot of games and the like. There's a, some crayons. Um, I think I bought these because there was one deck of cards um, in the box. Got some sort of homemade wood toy there. Uh, probably a Monopoly board, I suspect. Yep. So some stuff that will go back into auction. Um... Now, I bought these because there was a deck of cards from North Star Oil. So that's all right. They're kind of warped, but they weren't very expensive anyway. Then we've got a card game from Flinch. Um, we've got these cards here that are, I guess, ocean to ocean. So playing cards, list of views. So some souvenir playing cards. Might be some value in those. Some McDonald's British Consoles playing cards. Pretty rough. Uh, it would have had some value. Um, explosives Limited. And what do we have here? Uh, Northwest Wholesale Company Limited playing cards. Some advertising cards again. Uh, yeah. Oh, these are actually kind of neat. Western Gem. Yeah, those are kind of cool. And some horse playing cards. So yeah, and I don't think those cost me more than about five bucks. So I think we did just fine on those. Also got some Brook Bond tea cards here. A little package of those. And then give us this day our daily bread. So just kind of a neat picture. I wanted to also see maybe if there was something cool in the back. I'm going to take that apart later and see if there's anything in there. But uh, regardless, that's still a neat piece that I can sell for, oh, I don't know, 35 type thing. Would we'll probably, probably let it uh, or make it go for the quick. And then got some frames. I have no idea what these, these just came with. Yeah, they're nothing. Okay, yeah, they're just junk. Okay, so that's it folks. Thanks for watching. Please be sure to like and subscribe and check out our other videos on antiquing, picking, thrifting, scrapping, etc. And if you haven't seen the video on the garage sale, antiques garage sale stuff that I bought, uh, check it out as well. You may have seen it before this video, but if not, I'll put try to put the... Um, the video in the top corner or one of the corners of this video at the end here anyway thanks for watching folks please be sure to like and subscribe and check out our other videos thanks for watching folks take care